Hello and welcome back to Lorcana Villain. My name is Baker and today we're going to be taking a look at some more Ursula winning deck lists. The video I did the other day definitely overran so I want to move straight into things. A quick shout out to the channel sponsors Card Market. If you're looking for Lorcana singles at competitive rates please check out Card Market and of course never fear if you have not sent me your list or you've got a set championship coming up and you're hoping that you'll make win an Ursula and you'd like to submit yours. There's still plenty of time. I'll be doing these videos through to the end of the set championship season so feel free to send them on over either via twitter or emailing emailing me lucanavillain at gmail.com other than that let's take a look at some winning deck lists so we're going to be looking at all the ink combinations that i missed the other day and we're going to be starting off with some sapphire steel now at the time there was only, I, i'd only been sent about five but i've been sent a couple more so we've got seven lists to look through so i've definitely up there with the most represented ink combinations for decks that i've been sent so far but yeah sapphire steel Still, still feeling really, really good. Um, I, I say quite a lot that I feel like it has a bad Ruby Amethyst matchup. And I know a lot of really passionate and talented Sapphire Steel players that disagree. And I absolutely see uh, the Fort Trail because this is just a, such a powerful ink combination. Getting to utilize Lucky Dime along with a whole new world for the hand refreshed. Worth noting that not all Sapphire Steel decks are looking to run this whole new world at the moment. I definitely think having it gives you a much better Ruby Amethyst matchup up and the deck has adapted even more because it was so weak to that uh flynn sisu uh queen's castle line and they have adapted in the form of a new two cost character argus the cyclops who is a two cost inkable four one quest for one nothing fancy purely to be a character that we can put down early to have a nice high strength count so that we're not just letting flynn rider frenemy run away with the board state plus just the math really helps you with castles um just the four from four from Argus and the three from Smee or like uh, there's lots of uh, characters that hit for four here so it just helps you to be able to um, respond a bit better to Castle so I really think Argus is a, uh, is a fantastic addition. And on top of that, it's just another low-cost character that you can put on the board alongside your Cogsworth, your Tamatoa, your big characters to protect you against Tremaines and be King Undisputed, which is what I, I like. That if, if I'm the Ruby Amethyst player and I'm facing Sapphire Steel, if I can get those, play those unchecked, then I feel really favoured. But if they are able to constantly play out extra characters like the Argus, the Mr. Smee, some decks are running Scuttle, some are even running Hook just to have an even cheaper character, then that does give you a better matchup, I would say, as the Sapphire Steel Pie. But yeah, starting off with Harlan Sweet, who a uh, friend of the channel. I've met them a few times. Great guy, great player. Um, and we had him on for an interview quite a while back. And he's since become a content creator in his own right. And a very successful one. Uh, um, credit absolutely where, he, where it's due. I think he's done like 15 videos and he's approaching that 1,000 subscribers. So a huge shout out to Harlan Sweet and congratulations. And you should absolutely, absolutely go and check him out. He is one of the Sapphire Steel experts in our community. I know he's looking to branch out and do other things as well, but Sapphire Steel is very much his pet deck, and I think he's done a um, a guide which is available for sale. Uh, I'll link his channel down in the description, but yeah, definitely worth checking out and knows a lot about this deck. They are um, always talking about it and always looking to discuss it and find ways to improve it, and this is the build they found themselves on at the moment. So let's start off with the items. We've got those four Porpsicle, four four to Sphere that just help to make this deck so much more consistent with these one-drop items that draw a card, and of course they're fueling our Flavishams and our Tamatoas. We've got four Fishbone Quill for the ramp and two copies of Lucky Dime, which obviously gives you insane reach um, into the, in the mid to late part of the game. If you can get this down next to some big characters like uh, the Tamatoa, and there's a couple of other characters here, like the Tinkerbells, the Bells, and the Gastons. So yeah, Lucky um, Lucky Dime, just a fantastic card. For our songs, we're on three Grab Your Swords, four Whole New World, one copy of Let It Go, and two copies of Along Came Zeus. Zeus, nice spot removal and helps you with the locations. Let It Go, good for those bigger characters like opposing Tamatoas or Cinderella Stout Hearted so that can be hard to remove with the resist whole new world obviously for the hand refresh and grab your swords just Tink Swords is a great play that can wipe boards in and of itself gives you a good bucky when you've got access to this uh, so yeah it looks really good we're running two Rise of the Titans to which can deal with opposing items it's good for taking out dimes and fishbone quills in the mirror um, but more than anything this is for the locations most notably the Queen's Castle we got three copies of a boom for that early board control get rid of Diablos, um, another answer to Flynn Rider if you don't hit your Argus. Um, so yeah, we like Baboom. And then our characters, we've talked about Argus, we've got Smee with some great stats, we've got Mickey Mouse, four copies, who obviously helps us ramp, we're seeing no copies of one jump ahead in this deck, and 
mentioned, I, I know Harlan's talked quite a lot about his opinions on one jump versus Mickey Mouse. And I would, again, I'd, uh, recommend you go check out his channel. I'm pretty sure he's done a video just on that topic on its own, like 10 minutes discussing Mickey versus one jump. I'm a big fan of one jump, but I trust Harlan. Um, he knows his dick, uh, deck really, really well. So he's utilizing those four Mickey. We've got two copies of Bell to be a really aggressive quest. And when we're up to 10 ink, um, yeah, 10 ink. And of course, great in combination with Lucky Dime. Flavishing for the draw. We've got Cogsworth to give resist one, which really upsets the opposing map. Ward makes him hard to remove, and he's a first class singer. We've got two copies of Beast Hard Headed to, to remove opposing items like diamonds, fish bones, which are the main targets. So, okay, you could sometimes hit a flute or something like that, but it's also just a 4 4 character, so it's out of range of Medusa. It quests for two, and being a five cost, we can sing a lot of our songs. And we're running one copy of Gaston Intellectual Powerhouse. Who we've not seen a lot in set four Sapphire Steel deck. Six cost, uninkable, four, four, quest for three. Shift is irrelevant. We're not running a, sh a shift target. And the ability developed brain. When you play this character, look at the top three cards of your deck. One goes into your hand and the rest goes to the bottom of your deck in any order. So yeah, I really like Gaston. That three lore is huge, whether it's because you're questing or you're benef benefiting from Dime. Again, four, four stat line is perfectly um, perfectly acceptable. It's out of Medusa range. Again, we're ramped, so we should could have access to this on turn four or five but potentially turn four with fishbone um and yeah it's helping us find the pieces that we need this is like this is very much a combo deck in many ways so yeah one copy of gaston here we've got four tinkerbell to be some great board control and of course these three tamatoas who are going to get additional lore based on the amount of items that we have on the board and when he enters play and quest we can recycle those items so yeah just uh, definitely our win condition a lot of the time in conjunction with lucky dimes so, yeah sapphire still still doing really well and this looks the, the if I was going to play Sapphire Steel tomorrow, uh, I would probably just play whatever Harlan's playing. I, I feel like this this looks pretty good. There's nothing I see here, even as a less experienced Sapphire Steel player, that I feel like I would hugely want to change. I like the Gaston. It's probably flex, I, I would imagine. Um, but yeah, the rest of this looks really, really good. So congrats to Harlan. We've got Ready, Set, Draw TCG, a similar looking list. We've got no Mickeys, but the four one jump aheads here. Uh, we've got the same song count, but with two Let It Go, the same item count, four Tamatar. We've got those two Argus in here, along with the two uh, four Smees, two bell the four flavisham the four grandfather clock the just one copy of beast hard-headed and then we're running one copy of aerial treasure collector who is a six cost uninkable three four quest for three she has ward and if you have more items than your opponent then she um gains two she gains two lore on her card so she got she can quest for five um which i know harlem was playing at one point but yeah he's that he's, mo he's moved away from aerial but i'm still a fan of aerial to be honest maybe that'd be one thing that i would change if i was going to play a sapphire steel list different to what harlem's playing because I do like the aerial. We're also running two copies of Hercules. Six cost ingable, six five, quest for two, bodyguard and resist one. So again, like it's just another one of these. We can have this online early because we're ramp. Um, it can sing our songs. 6-5 is really nice. It's out of Medusa. And because of that resist one, we live along Kame Zeus as well. And yeah, Bodyguard is pretty cool just to be able to protect your Ariel if she's quested, your Bell, um, your Tinkerbell, whatever, whatever it might be. So yeah, very untraditional, but fair enough and it did well for them we got three baboons two rise of the titans everything else looking the same so congrats to them next up we got jestico with a whole lot of bs uh, we've got two copies of Captain Hook here to be an early drop, good for taking out castles, and as I mentioned earlier, just for being able to extend to protect yourself against Tremaine and uh, be King Undisputed. We've got four Smees in here, no uh, no other characters really to like subvert the Flynn Rider frenemy. Um, I mean, Mr. Smee can do some of that work, but if they get the Fox down on three, then that can hurt. But we've got Baboons here, three copies, so that should help. Uh, we've got three Mickeys, no one jump ahead, two copies of Ariel, um, uh, Treasure Collector, uh, two, two copies of Smash in here as well. Deal with Diablos and Gastons and Docks and Aerials. And there are plenty more targets. Uh, two Let It Go, four Whole New World, three uh, Grab Your Swords and the traditional items. So yeah, looks good. Next up, we're seeing a version with four copies of Captain Hook and two copies of Scuttle. Two cost ingable, one, three, quest for one. And when you play Scuttle, look at the top four cards of your deck. Add an item to your hand. The rest go to the bottom. So again, another character that can help us extend. Uh, but yeah, if you're finding 
your fishbone quill or your lucky dime, then great. And a lot of the time, lucky dime is, in most matches, lucky dime is the most important card in the match. And you really want to find it. And even if you don't find it with scuttle, the, 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 the extra cards go to the bottom of the deck. So at least you're digging closer to it. So I know it's not a hugely popular card among the community, but I quite like scuttle. We've got three bell, three smee, two grandma Tala for some additional draw, three copies of aerial treasure collector. That's probably too much for, by my, for my money, but fair enough. We've got one fire the cannons, no baboons in here uh, for Storm Rage on. One Smash, two Zeus, no Let It Go. Only three copies of Whole New World, fair enough, it's probably fine. And everything else looking, uh, uh, three Fishbone Quill, but everything else is pretty traditional. Next up, we've got Steven Gettle. Three copies of Argus here to help us against the Flynn Rider and the locations. We've got four Mickey Mouse. No one jump ahead in here. We're running two copies of Benja to be an additional answer to items. I think I prefer the Beast. Steven, if you're watching, I, I, I think Beast just works a lot better in this deck. Maybe consider that. Or, or maybe you have considered that. And if, if, if you have, then... Talk me. I'd, I'd love to hear your thoughts on why you still prefer the Benja. Because Benja's good, but I think in this deck in particular, Beast is probably just 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 an upgrade. Uh, one copy of Ariel, the 4-4 Flabbersham, and uh, Cogsworth, two uh, Bell. Seeing that, two copies of Hercules again. Maybe I missed the memo on this being uh, a great addition to this deck. I mean, I, again, I get it. It's hard to remove, and just being able to bodyguard your Bell, your Ariel, whatever it is, uh, does seem pretty cool. So, yeah, I like it. Two copies of Fire the Cannons, one Rise of the Titans, one Let It Go, one Zoom. Uh, and traditional action and item package. So congrats to Steven. And our last Sapphire Steel deck, we've got Trainer, Wire, everything looking pretty traditional here. The standard action package, four whole new world, three grab swords, two let it go, two Zeus, two Rise of the Titans, three Baboom, we're running four copies of Mickey, proxy versions, uh, two copies of Beast Hardheaded, two Aerial Treasure Collector, I think is the sweet spot. Yeah, this looks cookie cutter as heck. So yeah, congratulations to them. All right, moving on to our Amethyst Steel decks. Now, I know firsthand that uh, this is a very strong deck at the moment, especially into Ruby Amethyst. Uh, this was my only loss of the day in my in the Media Set Championship uh, in round four. Me and Specy were both um, the only three O's, and he'd actually gone completely. He hadn't even conceded a game. I had. I'd conceded two. I, I think I yeah. I, I, I lost one game to Ermeister. Um, I two O'd Alphos. And then I lost a game to the Bucky player I played in round three. So, yeah, he was on a completely undefeated record. And then he 2 owed me. And then it would have been me and him again in the finals. But I had to go home because the event had overrun. But I said there and then, I think he probably had my number that day. And, yeah, this deck uh, performing really, really well. Uh, and this was sent to me by a viewer where they just sent me Species list from Dreamborn. But, yeah, a really strong uh, deck. Um, the fancy new toy being Bell. Accomplished Mystique. Five cost inkable. 4-4 four, four quest for 2. Shift is irrelevant but enhanced healing when you play this character. Move up to 3 damage counters from chosen character to chosen opposing character which can be just done if you've just got some damage on you from basic challenges but really nice synergy with Mr. Smee who obviously adds damage counters to himself but yeah just a super low to the ground deck we've got three, uh, 3 copies of Maleficent biding her time for quest for 2 we've got 4 Chernobog to help us dig and just be a check. We've got 4 copies of Magic Broom to be another card that just can be board press and can just have, like at any point when we play a character we can just banish it to draw a card and just dig some more we've got four copies of snake to return to like protect our maleficent and reuse some of these come up into play abilities like our four rabbit and four fox um sorry four rabbit and four goat we've got the four fox to be another way to bounce and more board control mr smee with some great stats for benja to really make sure that items are not sticking in on your opponent's side of the field and again quest for two is pretty good three copies of tiny tactician tinkerbell which really needs to be respected gives you a great early line into Bucky because obviously we can shift into Giant Fairy Tinkerbell on turn four, which is not a lot of the time it's just going to kind of going to completely shut them down. But against anything, this is just a, such a strong play that really checks board. So yeah, really good. Uh, four copies of a boom to help with Diablos, Flins, whatever it is that's got to go. Four friends, three along came Zeus for spot removal, one sorcerer spell book to put a clock on the game yourself, and of course four Queen's Castle. So yeah, a really fantastic list. I know firsthand, lost to it twice. Um, and yeah, the, this, this this wasn't sent to me by Specy, it was sent by a viewer, but um, clearly other people picking it up and finding success. 
Next up, a player playing a very similar version, but they're utilizing two copies of Merlin Crab to give Challenger 3 to a character when he enters and leaves play. What I really like, we're also running four copies of Lawrence, three cost inkable, zero, four quest for two. And while he's got no damage, he gains four strength, which is a really nice check and helps you again against opposing Flynn's. And it's just a big four uh, beat stick that hits for four. That's that's pretty good. And again, if he does ever get chip damage done on him, then maybe we just... Oh, we're not running the, the bell. I, I was about to say we could remove it with the bell which we're not running okay he's just a big beat stick then uh three copies of fire the cannons three copies of smash everything else pretty standard so congrats to this person next up we got mr miko who is playing a few differences we are running that accomplished mystic bell uh no copies of maleficent but we're running two copies of the one drop robin hood no fl uh, no shift target for it so just like putting that's playing that's playing psychology basically you put this robin hood down then the opponent to a degree has to respect that you might have the shift line only three copies of snake uh one copy of the magic broom aerial is it aerial cleaner the one uh, it's two three and gains evasive during your turn so it's just a uh, diablo answer we've got three benja running two copies of dolores madrigal four cost inkable three three quest for two and when you play this character if your opponent has an exerted character in play you may draw a card and we're also running four copies of chen po who's a five cost inkable four seven with bodyguard four seven is a great stat line it's out of medusa it's out of zeus so he's a big boy he's gonna be hard to remove and gonna be a bodyguard for all of these low cost characters also running two copies of grab your swords uh but yeah a few differences i i like i respect it one you one ursula so congrats to them and our final Amethyst Steel deck to look at is more of a Broom variant. Um, so we're running on top of the Illuminary Keeper Magic Broom, who's just good in this, good in Amethyst anyway. We're running two copies of the Bucket Brigade, Bucket Brigade, two cost Inkable, two two quest for one. And when you play this character, you can shuffle a card from your from any player's discard into their deck. We're running four copies of the Aerial Cleaner, the one the evasive one. We're running three copies of the Industrial Model, three cost Inkable, two three quest for one and make it shine when you play this character chosen character gains a resist one into the start of your next turn also running four copies of the five cost uninkable magic broom swift cleaner who's a four four quest for two rush and when you play this character you can shuffle all brooms from your discard into your deck and then to go with all of those brooms running four copies of yen sid who's a two cost inkable one three quest for one uh, but if you have two or more broom characters in play then he quests for three and when you play him if you have a character named magic broom in play you may draw a card so yeah a broom variant we're also running two copies of the sorcerer's tower brooms can move there for free it's a two seven stat line two to move there seven willpower and characters get plus one law while there um so yeah, just a fun broom variant. I think Miss Memento, uh, if you're open to it, I would probably bring this down to a two or three count because I don't know. I, don't, I feel like it's what, like we've got foxes for Rush that hit for this same number. Um, and I, I don't know. I feel like there, there are better cards you could play there. Like maybe a couple of copies of uh, Queen's Castle <laughs> wouldn't go amiss. But other than that, this looks really, really good utilizing a good, a good portion of the broom. So you have that fun archetype, but also utilizing the bounce package, goats, rabbits, foxes, we've got a boom smash looks really really good so congratulations to them all right moving on to some ea tempo just win the game it's been so long it feels like it's been so long um yeah when i the video i put up the other day doing the first half of these lists the top comment was someone saying people need to start to put some respect on the name of ea tempo and do you know what I wholeheartedly agree with you. Really like this ink combination. Uh, one of the strongest decks in set three has definitely underperformed so far in set four. But we've got a few to look at here. So we've got that bounce engine, the four snake, the four fox, uh, only three copies of goat, four rabbit, and we're also running two copies of crab. For our early drops, we've got three Sherdabog's followers to be a nice board check and to help us dig when we need to. Two copies of Pascal who gains evasive when you have another character on board. So a character that can just cheat out a lot of early lore if our opponent doesn't have evasive answers also running four copies of the one drop pegasus who is an evasive character without needing another character on board so these two can really run away with lore if your opponent doesn't have answers to them four copies of kuzgo who you draw a card when he's banished i'm a fan of kuzgo and nice synergy with the crab we're running two copies of pinocchio for some nice board control two cost on inkable one one quest for one when you play this character you can exert chosen opposing a character so really strong we can play this and then 
hopefully use our snakes, our foxes, or something that's been boosted up with crab, or merlin, or something that's been boosted up with cricky, to just take out our opposing board, and we can rebounce this Pinocchio and reuse him. I've been a, I, I'm a big, big fan of Pinocchio. I have been ever since its release. We've got three copies of Ursa Deceiver to snipe those song cards. Three copies of Diablo, because why not, I guess? I really don't think Diablo is as good without Bucky. I really, really don't. Like, I feel like this could protect... Like, again, they've still got to have the answer to him. I think while everyone is still playing, like, the four brawl, high counts of a boom, etc., I don't think the Diablo is worth it. I think if we get to a point where, like, players start to move to lower counts of those, because, like, maybe we don't see Diablo as much for a while, and then, like, you start seeing less brawl, less baboom, stuff like that. Maybe he can... Sn like, it's going to be a meta call, I think, all the time, and depending on how many people are still respecting that they need to have answers to Diablo. So, I don't know. Um, t t TBC. We're running two copies of Peter Pan Shadow Finder to be an answer to Diablo with that rush and evasive on a 2-3. Uh, yeah, I mentioned Cricky, who gives plus three to all of our characters on play. And it's just a five-cost dinkable 3-4 that quests for three. So, that's some insane reach. Big fan of this Cricky. We've got four Floodborne Pegasus to go with the baby. Three friends on the other side. We're running three copies of We Don't Talk About Bruno for board disruption, for discard, and sometimes Times just spot removal if they don't have any cards in their hand. Three copies of the Queen's Castle, two copies of Hidden Cove to really mess with the opponent's map, and one copy of copy of Bibbidi Bobbidi Boo, which is the three cost inkable song. Uh, return cho chosen character of yours to your hand to play. Uh, this is blurry. I can't see it. <laughs> return chosen character of yours to your hand to play another character with the same cost or less for free. I knew what it did, but I just wanted to be accurate with my reading. Um, so yeah, some nice fun niche plays here with replay. Replaying goats, replaying rabbits, replaying crickies, replaying crabs, replaying Ursa Deceivers, Pinocchio. Yeah, just a lot of cute plays that this tech can open up. So, yeah, really great to get to talk about some EA Tempo again because it, because it is a deck I'm a, uh, I'm a big fan of. So, congratulations to this person. Next up, a much more streamlined version and looks very, like, this looks pretty much spot on for what I would expect a Season 3 EA Tempo deck to look like. Uh, we're running four copies of the Cursed Merfolk, one cost, uninkable, zero, one quest for two. And whenever uh, this character is challenged, each opponent chooses and discards a card. So just some incredible aggro. And if they don't hit their one drop, this just runs away with games. We're running three Flynn Rider, who has the same effect on a slightly bigger body. We're running four copies of Maleficent for some more card draw and running three copies of Kit Cloud Kick, a tough guy. Three cost inkable, two, two, quest for one. When you play this character, you may return chosen opposing character with two strength or less to their player's hand, which I really like still. It's a, it's a Diablo answer and answers a lot of things. So yeah, super traditional EA tempo list looks really good. Next up, a little bit of spice. We're seeing those four Cursed Merfolk. We've got three copies of the Baby Pegasus, no Floodborne, uh, but we're running a 3-4 Diablo line, so we're, we're doing this without Bucky. I'm not sure if this is worth without Bucky, personally, but Scrubble certainly found some use for it. Uh, we're also running three copies of Jack, Connoisseur of Climbing, three cost Ingable. I always smile when I talk about Jack. <laughs> I just really like Jack. I realised the other day, like, I... Like, I, like Basil is obviously one of my favourite. Um, I, I was doing a Q and A on Twitter or an Ask Me Anything on Twitter, and someone said, "Oh, who's your favourite hero?" And I was like, "Well, it's probably Basil. Like, obviously, Rattigan's my mascot, but I just love the film Basil overall, and I love the ca the character Basil. I'm just a big, big fan." But then I said, "But the other answer would probably be." Um, Mickey Mouse, but specifically the Sorcer Sorcerer's Apprentice one, the one with the the the, the, the hats and the ro I've got like a plushie of it behind me that I've had since I was like six years old. Um, but yeah, I've just really always liked that iteration of Mickey, and I was like, like. When did I discover such a fondness for mice? I've never owned mice as pets, but apparently that happened. And apparently Jack is also high on my sentiment sentiment list. Anyway, sorry, that went, I went on a right rant there. Three cost Ingable, one four quest for two. And sneaky idea when you played this character, chosen opposing character gains reckless during their next turn. Yeah, I'm a big, big fan of Jack. Um, we're also running the Floodborne Ursula Sea Witch Queen. Seven cost Ingable, four seven quest for three. We can shift five on top of our Ursa Deceiver, and two effects when this character quests, exert chosen character, which again is really nice, good for board control, and you'll listen to me, other characters can't exert to sing songs, which can shut down a lot of decks, Steel Song, Sapphire Steel, we can really annoy them, so yeah, really strong, and then we have three copies of the Temperamental Emperor 
Ku's goal. Five cost on Inkable, two, four quests for three. Ward and not touchy. When this character is challenged and banished, you may banish the challenging character. Yo, I don't know if it's right, but it's it's right in my heart. It's right in my heart. So massive shout out to you, Scrubbles. We've got two Queen's Castle, two Bruno. This is probably a low card in the castle. This is probably the best card in the game. This is probably the best card in the game. I like to run four copies of things that I think might be the best card in the game. But yeah, yeah huge congratulations to Scrubbles. And then finally, we have Steve with uh, a little bit of spice as well. They're running four copies of Maleficent biding her time on top of those cursed merfolk. So straight gas, nothing but gas. We've got four copies of Jack. We're running two copies of Dolores Madrigal to draw cards if our opponent has an exerted character in play. We're running two of those Ursa Sea Witch Queen to be our Floodborne uh, and shift onto the Ursa Deceiver. We're running three copies of what's probably the best card in the game. We're also running three copies of the Queen of Hearts Quick Tempered. Who was it that was running this? in in Germany. Was it Brandon? Brandon? I can't remember. It was one of the very few EA Tempo players that made day two um, and was running a couple of copies of this, which we uh, had a good old chat about while we were casting. Two cost uninkable, one, two quest for two and royal rage. When you play this character, deal one damage to chosen damage opposing character, which is super niche, but she quests for two. So why the heck is not? So yeah, congratulations to Steve. And those are all our EA Tempo lists. So EA Tempo players unite. You, if you, you need to take them to your set championship if you want to bring the color bring the ink combination back we got works to do my, my friends but let's move on to a super fun ink combination we've got some lemon and lime emerald amber um most of them being super fun song variants so we've talked about most of these emerald cards of just a moment ago but this deck is running three copies of prince john three cost uninkable one two quest for two ward so pesky to get rid of and i sentence you whenever your opponent discards one or more cards you can draw a card for each card discarded and in that vein we are running four copies of the ursa deceiver of all who's going to let us double sing a lot of these songs but among those songs is sudden chill so that can be a discard too if sung by ariel and prince john's going to be drawing all the while of course, they can also discard just from Ursula, or if they want to challenge into our 3-3 um, three, three of Flynn Folk. But we're also running three copies of You Have Forgotten Me. Each opponent chooses and discards two cards. So a lot of really nasty cards here to make our opponent discard, and Prince John will benefit all the way. We've got three copies of uh, Flynn Rider, his own biggest fan, who's really aggressive when our opponent's got an empty hand and evasive, so that's really nice. I'm running four copies of the Muses. Four cost Ingable, two, four, quest for one, Ward, and the Gasp of Truth. Whenever you play a song, you may return a chosen character with two strength or less to their player's hand there we we dipped in and out of it there uh yeah i think this is a super fun card and obviously we've got a large song count in here um so yeah and lots of characters fit this description of two strength or less so yeah you love to see it we've got cricky to boost strength and be an aggressive quester four copies of uh, three copies of diablo and then to look at the rest of the action package running three copies of painting the roses red which uh up to two chosen characters get minus one strength and draw a card which again can help get more things into the range of the muses four bare necessities to snipe those non-character songs four mother knows best to control the board four copies of we don't talk about bruno to control the board and be discard and three copies of record player two cost inkable item look at this whenever you play a song chosen character gets minus two strength but to the start of your next turn so heck that gets a lot that, that gets a lot more into the muses range like if you've got the record player on on the board just playing any song you're immediately lowering them by two so that makes so much more like fit into this two strength or less and especially if you're playing it alongside painting the roses red that's kind of huge and then hit parade your character's name stitch count as having plus one to sing songs and we're not running any stitches so just the look at this ability so yeah it looks super fun i'm well keen to try a deck like this uh, oh four spectacular singer as well of course to help us find these songs and sing them cheap so yeah huge congratulations to this person next up we've got shad orcs with a very similar looking list they're running one copy of uh, Cinderella Ballroom Sensation uh, just to be an early character to sing a nice early be our guest or Bare Necessity, Sudden Chill or Painting the Roses Red or to be fair she can also contribute towards Singer 8 for this Under the Sea which we'll get to in a moment. We've got 4-4 four, four Diablo line running four copies of Sir Hiss who's a two cost Ingable 3-1 quest for one with Evasive to be an answer to Diablo and even Diablo at the uh, Hidden Cove which running two copies of 
ourselves. Uh, everything else looking similar. We've got four copies of Kida here. Five cost inkable, three, five, quest for two. She's a shift three, but no shift target in this deck. And when she's played, all characters gets minus three strength into the start of your next turn. So this can just give you a free questing turn, but it also synergizes really nicely with Under the Sea, which we'll come to in a moment. Four Cricky for board control and aggressive crest, uh, aggressive questing. One copy of Lucifer, Lucifer to be some more discard. Five cost, uninkable, two, two, quest for two. And when you play this character, each opponent chooses, chooses and discards either two cards or one action. This can shut down games out of nowhere. We've got two BR guests, sorry, four BR guests, two painting the roses red, uh, four bare necessities, four sudden chill, four we don't talk about Bruno, those two hidden cove, and yes, uh, three copies of Under the Sea, which is a sing together eight song. Um, so any number of characters that equal eight can exert to sing this. Put all opposing characters of two strength or less on the bottom of their player's deck in any order. So one sided board removal. So it gets around Ward. And yeah, like obviously we can lower strength through painting the roses red. But Kida doing a minus three to the entire board is going to put most things into this range. So super fun, super cool card. Congratulations to Shadowks. Next up, a very similar looking list. Uh, they're running that Kida under the sea package, but they're also running two copies of the one drop two two Kida to be a shift target. We've got two copies of uh, Daisy Duck here, four cost ingable, two, three quest for one. When you play this character, each opponent chooses and discards a card. So another way of making them discard. And we're all running four copies of the Muses in this build for some board control. Three, you haven't, for you have forgotten me. Uh, Roses, Bear Necessity, Sudden Chill, Mother Knows Best, everything else looking pretty standard. So yeah, Congratulations to them. And our final Lemon and Lime aggro deck is a full-on aggro. We are running that 4-4 Kida package, but no Under the Sea. That's just to give us a, a nice free questing turn on the turn that we can put down Kida, and she can give us some board control. Running four copies of Lilo for aggressive questing, four Merfolk, uh, four Flynn Rider, four Piglet, who gets plus two lore when there are two other characters on board, four Simba to be a bodyguard, four Windy Darling questing for two on a 1-3, four copies of Enchantress who quests for two, and while she's being challenge she gets plus two strength so she normally trades um four ursas to snipe those be prepared and those grab swords for baloo who has bodyguard and you gain two law when he's removed so again just more aggro for donald duck who gives one law to an extra character to a character on board when he's played and is a bodyguard kick cloud kicker for board control for pegasus this is all of the gas that ever did gas so huge congratulations to adam all righty we got two decks left to look at both different in combinations we're going to start off with Tiffany. This list was sent to me by Dick Burns from the Forbidden Mountain, and then you might be familiar with, really successful Lorcana player. And yeah, apparently this is um, a relatively new player who made their deck ba just based on what people in the room, or basically she was just given a bunch of cards, a bunch of like okay staples by people, and this is the deck that she made. And she won herself an Ursula, which we uh, we, we love to see a budget deck. So yeah, loads of gas. We've got the, flit, the four, just the four or Curse Merfolk. I was going to say maybe Flynn, uh, Flynn Rider in, could be in here, the two drop. Uh, but we are seeing four copies of the one drop, which is nice to see. We've got four Enchantress for aggro, Ursa to rip song, Simba who quests for three, so lots of gas. Four Cheshire Cat for gas and board remove, uh, board control when he's banishing the challenge. Four LeFou to have re-ready our characters and keep them safe. One Kick Cloud Kicker to, for some board control. One copy of Wildcat to be an evasive answer and to remove those items. Four Mini for the gas. One Sisu for removal on like there, there are plenty of targets that this could have. Four Donald Duck for some card draw and aggressive questing. Three Hans who quest for three. Three Tinkerbell, three Pongo. Two Eric for some removal. Two copies of Mad Hatter who quest for three, but when he's challenged, uh, you can draw a card. Four copies of Ray who's got evasive and quest for three. Two copies of Bounce, return chosen character of yours to your hand to return another chosen character to their player's hand, so board control. Two copies of Shield of Virtue to re-ready and keep characters safe. And two Deville Manor just to be an aggro location. So yeah, it just goes to show you can absolutely just go with all the gas and win yourself an Ursula. So huge congratulations to this person. And our final deck to look at for today's video, and don't fret, there's going to be at least, I think I'd probably another two more of these videos. We've got another 
nearly two weeks of set championships to go. I have had a couple of lists in the last 24 hours that were like Ruby Amethyst or Steel Song or basically decks that we covered those ink combinations yesterday. So I wanted to make sure this video was just covering the rest of the inks that we hadn't looked at yet. So we've looked at each all in combinations at least once and then my next video i'll go back and we'll start looking at uh, every at everything again but yeah uh super fun looking list here we've got some blue farsa so obviously mufasa here who when banished look at the top card of your deck if it's a character you can play it for free exerted so we, we love to see that running as our only non-character card three copies of the world's greatest criminal mind which obviously already has uh, a good amount of targets maui Tamatoa, Hercules, um, Simba, a few things, but we are running a 4-4 Queen Engine who lets us manipulate strength so even more characters can get into this range. Three copies of Hades for some removal. Three copies of Robin Hood, whose card draw 4-4 stat line is really respectable. Quest for two and has evasive during your turn, so you'd love to see it. We're also running three copies of Snow White, Well Wisher, six cost uninkable, 3-5, quest for two, shift four, and we are running a shift target and wishes come true whenever this character quests you may return a character from your discard to your hand uh, you go through characters quite quickly quite regularly with this deck so being able to pull back the ones we need is super good whether it's your Mufasa or Rapunzel that we're running four copies of for card draw so yeah looks really fun and then three copies of the um the baby Snow White that we can shift on to when you play her you can remove two damage from chosen character which could absolutely come up we've got three copies of Cruella de Vil who's got evasive to deal with evasive characters two copies copies of Philatetes, Trainer of Heroes, two cost Ingable, three, one, and support, which can just help to take up bigger bodies and locations. We've got four Doc and three Gaston to lower character costs. We're running two Hades to also be a way of replenishing characters from the discard. Four copies of Maximus, who's a five cost Ingable, four, five, with Bodyguard and support. So again, just help us with those big locations and bodies. And again, Bodyguard protecting our characters like Doc and Gaston, etc. We got four Cogsworth for the resist and the ward. Running three copies of Minnie Mouse Musketeer Champion. Five cost uninkable, one five quest for two bodyguard and dramatic entrance. When you play this character, banish a chosen opposing character with five strength or more. So the same effect. So world's greatest criminal mind on a body. And again, we can get more characters into this range with the queen. And then finally, we got four copies of Alice Growing Girl. Three cost inkable, one four quest for one. Good advice. Your other characters gain support. And what did I? I do while this character has 10 strength or more she gets plus four law so makes sense we have courtesy of queen and maximus and philatetes who with their support um we should be able to hopefully get alice up to a nice big 10 strength and then questing for five it's a big dream but it came true for this person so yeah huge congratulations to chris and that's it for today's video on Ursula winning deck list. So yeah, there's another couple of weeks left to go of set championships. So if you end up entering one and winning an Ursula, please do feel free to send me the list. And if you've already sent me your list and I haven't shown it in this video or the last, don't fret. I expect it will be in the next video. But if it's not, then leave a comment just letting me know um, when you sent it to me because it may be that I've just missed it. But there are a couple that I've got that like Ruby Amethyst or Steel Song or just ones that I covered in the last video that I've deliberately left so that we can start fresh now next time. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Huge congratulations to everyone that has won themselves an Ursula. Um, one final bit of admin stepping completely away from Lorcana for a moment uh, but to Magic the Gathering fans um, I have never had any interest in Magic the Gathering but I'm a big old fan of Assassin's Creed so I want me these Assassin's Creed um, Magic the Gathering cards or at least like the main ones I'm assuming there's an Altair and an Ezio and all this uh, all this stuff uh, I've done exactly no research and I know Google is my friend and I will talk to my friend uh, but if anyone can just wants to let me know in comments what's the best way of me going about getting these is there a certain collection I should buy or should I just be looking to buy singles for some of the main ones but yeah if you're in the know about Magic the Gathering and the Assassin's Creed set um, talk to me I want to be some Assassin's Creed cards but other than that other than that that's it from me for now thank you so much for watching if you're brand new to the channel please subscribe for all things Lorcana hit that like button to show support and we'll see you soon